Hi all, thanks everyone for coming. My name is Zina and I work on PALP project at Red Hat. So the main reason why we all gathered here is PALP. Now please you raise your hands and tell me who are here because they hear about the PALP for the first time. Very good. So in this session you will have the chance to learn about this cool project. And for other guys who already had the chance to play with Pulp and have some experience, uh, to keep your interest warmed up, I will talk about new features which we recently implemented. So the plan is I will go through slides, show you the basic concepts, I will show some features and demo, and in the end I will take a bunch of questions. So let's start. What is Pulp? Pulp is a platform for managing repositories. Imagine that in one hand you have a lot of content types like RPM, Docker images, erratas, puppet modules, and many others. And on the other hand, you have a lot of repositories. And in case you want to combine and manage these two concepts by one tool, Pulp is just for you. As I mentioned, yeah, I forgot to click that. <laughs> As I mentioned, Pulp supports many content types, but meanwhile, it, it is not tied up to any type. Uh, we have support for Python packages, for Docker images. I will tell you more about that in a couple of slides. I will tell you in this session about the new brand feature called Pull Through Cache. It is available in 2.8 version. We're completely open source. You can find all our code on the GitHub. You can see all the pull requests. You can comment. You can submit the pull request, and we will be really happy to some contributions. Python is a web application. It doesn't have any <coughs> graphical fancy interface, but instead we have a command line interface based on REST API. Now, let's see some examples. Who uses Pulp? Red Hat Release Engineering uses Pulp. So Red Hat Release Engineering is responsible to deliver contents to our clients. And it's a big deal because we have a lot of products, right? And behind the CDN, which is the content delivery network, there is Pulp. Pulp is also in public clouds. So if you have ever used an EC2 image on Amazon, and if you have ever done YAM install something, you pull this content from Pulp. Catello, which is the upstream project for Red Hat Satellite 6, uses Pulp, and obviously our lovely community. So when you have this fresh installation of Pulp, a new one, with what do you usually start? Usually you start with the creation of the repository. So when you create the repository, you tell to Pulp what kind of content you want to place into this repository. So let's say you want to manage RPMs. You created this repository. It's empty at this point. The only thing that has been done, there is also a record in the database. That's all. At this point, you want to get the content into Pulp. And you have two options. You can synchronize the content from the remote repo, such sources like CDN on CentOS. You can do it manually or on schedule. Or you can upload your own content. At the point when the content is into Pulp, you can move it around. You can copy one repository to another repository. And the main cool feature about that is the copies are cheap. For example, you can have hundreds of repositories and in, in each repository, same RPM. At this point, if there will be only one record in the database and a bunch of sim links that point to the storage path of this content unit. You can also apply some filters during the copy by using criteria search. So basically, you can mix and match content as the way you need and you desire. So let's say you have this repository prepared and you are ready to show this content to the rest of the world. 
what you're going to do, you want to publish your repository. And by publish, I mean make it available to the rest of the world. So y there are several options how to publish it. You can host the repo as a web-based repository, uh, or you can export it into an ISO. And the very nice thing about that is it's not limited to any particular kind of content. What does it mean? It, me it means that Pulp has a very flexible design. And in case you find out that there are, we, we support a lot of content types, but it can happen that you need something and we still do not support it yet. And at this point, you can do it by yourself. How to do that, I'll show you later. And it's not a very big deal. So let me show you the specific case. So we, do you see? Yeah, this is the Pulp Admin. Pulp Admin is our common line interface. What you do, you tell, I want to create an RPM repo. I do RPM repo create. I specify the repo ID and I specify the feed. The feed is the URL from which I want to pull in the content. This is the upstream remote content source. So at this point, I created this repository. What I do next, I sync it. I say pulp admin rpn sync run and specify repo ID. In addition to the run, we also have rpn repo sync schedule. So make a schedule, it's like a cron job. You can do it like once a day, once a month. It's how do you need that? So the thing starts, it downloads some metadata, it figures out what content it needs to grab, so there is some RPM, delta RPMs, and at the end the task succeeds. <coughs> at this point, the content is into pulp. Then there is the publish. It has, as you notice, some similar structure, so there is this RPM type, repo, publish, run. At this point, we are making content available to the rest of the world. What we do, we publish the metadata. Oops. Yeah, here is it. We are publishing the content types. And in the end, we are making available it via web. By default, it's available via HTTPS, but it's up to you to configure that. Oh. And now let's talk about this cool feature that we recently implemented. In Pulp, we have such concept as download policies. What does it mean? It, tell, it, it means that you tell to Pulp in which way you, you want the content available. So there is the immediate download, which we just saw. You say to Pulp, sync, pull it. So the content is pulled right away and saved to the file system. And there is the deferred download, which basically enables Pulp to serve the clients or copy content repos without actually downloading the every content unit first. And we have two types of deferred download. There is the on-demand download and the big background one. So what is done at this point, only the metadata is downloaded and saved to the database. And during sync, the, f the, the load of the file is skipped. So after synchronization and publish, the content is ready to serve when no actual content was downloaded. So there is some magic, let's say. <laughs> and the background download is pretty similar, the same, like the on-demand, but so it skips the file during the load. It, uh, saves the metadata into the database. And after the sync completes, in addition to that, it creates a task which runs in the background and downloads every file in the background. And the cool thing about that is, while the content is downloaded, you can still manage this content. You can do repo copy, you can publish it. Well, basically, it's anyway ready to serve the clients. Let me explain how it works. So let's say we have the YAM client, and it talks to Pulp. And it says, hey, Pulp, I want the Vim package. 
and it makes a request to the Apache. What does Apache? Apache handles the request, and it looks into its file system. Do I have this package? In case I do have this package, I serve it directly, and I respond to the client. In case I do not have this package, I make a free to redirect, and the request is redirected to the squid. Squid is our proxy, and what it does, it caches the content. Squid looks into its cache and sees, do I have this file? No, I don't have it. What it does, it makes a request to the pulp streamer. Pulp streamer is a microservice which is responsible to download the actual content from the remote source. So pulp streamer figure out, figures, figures out where this exact RPM lies. So it goes to the upstream repo, downloads the content, and streams the content back through the squid Apache right to the client. So at this point, the client received his content. One nice thing about all this process is once the pulp streamer finished its download, it makes a record into the database and says, hey, I downloaded this file and I make this notice to pulp. So at this point, pulp knows that this content was downloaded. And every 30 minutes, but I think it's configurable, uh, there is a task. And what does this task? This task goes to Squid, where all the cached files are, and downloads them and saves them into the file system of the pulp. So next time when the client requests the same package, it's not downloaded from the upstream repo, but Apache can serve it directly because it already have saved on the file system. Oh, I think that's all. Oh, and about the squid, it has a very nice feature. What it does is deduplicates the requests. What does it mean? It means that, for example, we have 100 clients that simultaneously decided to ask for the same package, and so there are 100 requests. Squid looks at them, deduplicates them, and practically it makes only one request to the streamer to download this package. So we will not be in a situation where there will be downloaded 100 times the same package. Uh, do you have some questions at this point? Yes? How do we actually invalidate the cache? Uh, well, honestly, saying I wasn't working especially on this feature, so maybe Michael will be able to answer. He's the team lead. <laughs> <laughs> How do we invalidate the cache? Oh, yeah. So I think there is a variable which you can configure, and this cache, I think, is alive for one day, right? So you can configure it to be expired like in half an hour, in one day, one month. Yeah, but then how you provide the consistency of repositories to cache one day after the If you rethink the repo and the metadata change, then that predicts that you would invalidate it. But otherwise, you're assuming upstream. If the metadata is the same, then you don't have to worry about the cache. So back to the content types. As I mentioned, we have a lot of them, and currently we do support these content types. We have the whole RPM family. We recently implemented the support for Python packages. We have support for Docker images. There is also OS3. Uh, you probably know about the project Atomic, which is based on this OS3. We also do the community support of Debian packages and SUSE packages. So let's see what are the use cases for Pulp. The typical use case is dev test production, where you pull in the content into development repository, you do some testing, and then you 
promote it by copying to the testing repository and then to a production one. So when you do manage the content, you want to be sure that you not screw up and by mistake you will not provide the testing repo to a production one. So Pulp basically ensures you that this will not happen. And it's very useful for testing upstream repos like new Red Hat point releases. Another use case is that you can mirror packages from Python package index. You can sync part of them or all of them. You can also add your own custom packages. And I want to mention that it can retain all versions. And why it's important is, I'll explain you. So I bet you all had the situation when you were using a package with some version and then you just build your infrastructure um, around this version and on PyPy there is a new release. And it happens sometimes that the whole release just disappears, but you still need that. So if you want to take control of, of these versions, Pulp will help you. So it can retain the versions you need, the exit one. Uh, our community also likes to take advantage of uh, use case of mirroring the Puppet modules from Puppet Forge. You can also sync all of the Puppet Forge or some specific modules. You can remove or add the modules as much as you need. And it can also retain old versions. Pulp is scalable and extensible. Pulp has a very flexible design. So our core features like synchronization and publish was implemented in a generic way, so you can extend it with the plugins. And plugin will tell to Pulp how to get content into Pulp and how exactly to get content out of Pulp. And once this plugin is installed, Pulp has the ability to auto-discover it automatically. So, plugins. As I said, if you want to implement a new support for new type, for example, RubyGems, right? We don't support RubyGems so far, and you need them. You can implement this, and how to do that? You need to write a plugin. Uh, when you write a plugin, you need to define how will be your content? What make it unique? Let's say RPM. Who knows what makes an RPM unique? The MVR. What? The name, version, release, epoch. Exactly, the NEVRA. So once you define the uniqueness of content, you need to figure out how to write the importer. And importer is the thing that basically answers the questions, how do I pull in the content into Pulp? What I need to interrogate the remote source? What do I need to grab? How I download it and how I stuff this content into Pulp? What does the distributor? Distributor basically makes the opposite thing. It figures out how to provide the content out of Pulp. So you have a bunch of RPMs, right, in the RPM repo. And what distributor does? It makes from it a general YAM repo, which is treated like any other YAM repo by YAM agents. So YAM agents can come and download the packages like from any, uh, any, any other YAM repos. We also have the CLI extensions. It's the common light extensions. It's also pluggable. And it has a very nice hierarchical design. We use the Okara framework. What does it, what it basically does, it enables you to implement new commands for newly implemented content types and operations. So we have like RPM repo sync, publish. I don't know what else you can invent or what else you need. You can do this with this framework. Now let's talk about the integration. 
Pulp is designed to be integrated with the build system, with the continuous integration testing workflow, with the REST API, the generic REST API that manages many content types. If you want to have some response to some action, like, I don't know, successful publish, there are like, there are these, you can have these events published to an IMQP topic exchange. Uh, to be clear, IMQP is a message broker. So you have this message producer that sends the messages to the exchange. What does the exchange? Exchange decides which queue should receive this message based by topic. So you subscribe to this exchange, look what is Pulp is doing, what's going on, and when you want to make a response, you just say, I want to kick off a job in Jenkins and to test this just published repository to see its correctness and how it's working. We also do provide HTTP callbacks. What do they do? Is they send a callback to the URL to notify that this job has been completed. And it's a very nice way to in inspect and see what Pulp is doing, and there is also the ability to answer on some actions where it's needed. Consumer tracking. Pulp has such ability to figure out what is installed, what packages, what content is installed on every machine in your infrastructure. In addition to that, it will be able to figure out what updates needs every machine in your infrastructure that were least recently available. From this future satellite, I think, takes a lot of advantages. Asynchronous, yeah. There are many asynchronous actions done in Pulp. We have a distributed task system, so we have this REST API that runs in Apache, and these long-running jobs like synchronization and publish, which are performed in a specific worker processes. So these workers uh, listen to the IMQP queue, go to that queue, and once there is a job to perform, it takes the task, it completes the task, sends a notification, then takes another job, completes that, and repeats that. So this is very nice because imagine yourself that you try to sync, I don't know, 10 repositories at once, and obviously you don't want to be blocked, right? So for these asynchronous things, we do use the salary project, which is the, let's say, main famous and responsible project for the asynchronous things. Oh, my presentation comes to an end, and I'd like to summarize. I gave you the basic concepts of Pulp, so I hope you already have in your head what Pulp can do, what you can do with Pulp, and where to apply it. So we have very nice extensive documentation, and I encourage you to visit it. You can find it on palproject.org slash docs. And in case you will not be able to find the answers to your questions or you will have some troubles and issues, we are very welcome. Go to the channel on the free note on pulp or pulp dev and we will be very happy to help you. I also want to mention that pulp is in Fedora. It's in Fedora Rawhide. So there is another, why not just go and install it because it's easy. And last but not least important thing I want to mention is we do accept contributions. <laughs> Thanks, that's all. Questions if anybody has, oh, and I also have stickers who has, who wants them. Yes.
somebody in a database, or what kind of database do you use? Yeah, so the question was, what kind of database do we use? We use the MongoDB database. Is there further question, why do we use this database? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're talking about the lazy, I mean, the new feature of the third and load. So the question was when the new feature will be available. The new feature is av available in 2.8 release, and it planned to be, be in 6.2 Red Hat Satellite 6. And I, I am supposed to give the scars. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Yes? Yes, it can happen because Pulp can manage a lot of repositories and depends what you're gonna do with Pulp. So if you're gonna if you plan to manage big repositories with a lot of a lot of content types and a lot of contents in general. The, it's better to scale the Mongo to an, its own machine because we practically we do not save the content itself in the Mongo, but we do store and save all the metadata. And imagine if you have like million or mi millions of unit types, of course it will arrive to <laughs> at least 10 kicks. So, okay, for you. <sighs> I need to walk. <laughs> and can you please do it? You ah you'll pick it first. Oh, okay. Do you have some any other questions? Yes. Are there any plans for centralized authentication and supporting Pulse like Prepa? Because when you have you know when multiple people try to push content to Pulse, you have to have static accounts in Pulse while you, on the other place those people have accounts or even machines. It doesn't matter. So is there any plans? Because nowadays you cannot do that. Well, probably it's in plan on some roadmap, but currently, I don't know, what are our plans? Do we plan that? <laughs> we always yes. do plan everything, but we don't have any strict time frames. <laughs> yes? Yeah. That's actually a new feature. <laughs> uh, it was, it was this support was implemented like a couple of months ago, right? And currently this last 10 and 11, I, I'm not sure about 12 is supported. Yeah, so it's. It is. Yes? So you said you've been using MongoDB. Uh, I've heard the, the bad things about Mongo. I have heard <laughs> good things about Mongo. And it seems you have quite a lot of data in some of your instances, probably. So I was wondering if there are like any experience from that, like if you have good experience with it, bad experience, some good chess. We do have experience. <laughs> 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 well, this is very interesting because we use the most relational data and the non-relational data, right? And it's very interesting why. Why it was done this way? I don't know, because I wasn't on the team at that time. But we do plan to migrate from Mongo to Postgres. Again, 
average coin release one repo, you do repo delete. It deletes the delete the repo in the logic of fall. So you do garbage collect the packages, they, they're gone, but the symlinks are still there. So the repo is there, the symlinks are there, and it kind of makes a mess. Yeah, uh, it's a known bug, <coughs> but I think we did fix that. Did we? Yeah. But at least I, I remember that we've been dealing with trying to fix that, and since our developers are nice developers and we are trying to fix everything, I think it's fixed by now. Yes? Um, so the question was pretty long, <laughs> <laughs> and the question was like when you uh, sync from the mode repo, you publish it, and then there are some new packages on the upstream source, and you sync and publish it again, and basically in the publish, it uh, and it, it it still saves the old packages which are already gone on the upstream repo. We have these cool things. We have an option like retain old content. Retain old content, that means that it will retain the packages on pulp even if they are gone on upstream with the next sync and publish. And there is another option called remove missing, which basically with the next 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 sync it will look into upstream and let's say there there is gone some package it will also delete locally that package. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Cool. Yes? <laughs> oh, I think so. Welcome. Uh, we're, what, what is our time? We're, we still have time. Yes? Uh, you mentioned a need for Ruby gems. I was wondering if there are other content types that are kind of, what are the top content types that Pulp needs support for. Um, like we can enlist people to write plugins. Um, well, I heard a lot of requests of Ruby Gems, and there is an external contributor who, I think he was writing the plugin for non-RPM type, right? Yeah, NPM. NPM, NPM, yeah. But I don't know. Did he finish that? Not yet. Well, it's still in progress. But yeah. Well, to write the plugin is not that difficult. There are like these three parts: the type definition, important, and distributor. When we also have very extensive doc, docs and examples, and the most important, we are all always there, and we can help you. And in case you even would like to fix some bug, you can pick it up. Don't be afraid. <laughs> because we will help you. We had a lot of cases when like extra contributors just reported that bug and he wanted to fix that and he already had the fix and he just took it and fixed it and submitted a pull request and it was merged. Uh, once again? Yes, we do have key to verify the bugs. Uh, we have a nice framework called Pulp Smash, and we developers also contribute to that, so it becomes more and more robust, and there are a lot of, there will be more and more test cases with each day. So we do have these parts of Pulp automated. Pulp Smash, okay. it's the framework to test Pulp. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> couple <laughs> uh, like about ten and two. <laughs> <laughs> 
we don't have that strict separation between developers and queue because developers are also interested to make pulp really reliable and safe. So when we do fix a bug, we know exactly the steps to reproduce and what to test. So if we have some time, like half an hour, one hour, we just try the test. We do have regular meetings with QE, so we do plan how this framework should be implemented and what else we need to automate. So we come very close and we help each other. Pulp performance Pulp testing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A perf yeah. testing, okay. Yeah. And the, the root, uh, also developer, the tools make ideal development mode. Uh, I just lost a couple of words in the end. Agile. Do we use? Agile development. Last question. Three, two, one. Done. Thanks. <laughs> and the seekers, who wants the seekers? Since you were finished, I would like to give you, give you a second interview and with your colleague or boss. Okay. Together. Just a quick one to get your feelings. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, um, I will wait for you outside. Okay, great. Yes. Great job. Thanks. Молодец. Спасибо. Nice to Oh, thanks. Спасибо. It was great. You used the word magic just once. Martin Colony did it like uh, 12 times. Спасибо. Every two minutes. Thank you. I, I was so nervous. Sure. Um, Sorry for the previous time. Yeah. No, I'm not offended in the least. I just give people shit. It's not like my only <laughs> actual skill. <laughs> Looking up how to do for loops in Ruby on Google and giving people I don't like it. Thank you. For loops in Ruby. Thanks. Okay, I, always, I guess I don't want to rely on it. I program something. Спасибо. Юра, Инна, очень приятно. Я. Do you have a microphone? Um, I think I can. <laughs> you should keep it, it's a speaker's here. <laughs> Thank you, and I, I probably lie. need to...
Can you hear me? Can you hear me in the room? Yeah, it's okay. Good. Thank you.